Well, good morning, afternoon, evening. I don't even know what the hell time it is. Hold on. Holy monkeys, it is 5.30 on Sunday evening. I thought it was only like 2. Um, I have been so busy with the, uh, with the Bearcat. So much has been done. It's come a long way since the last video. Um, trying to remember where I left off. I think I left off with uh, needing to um, finish up the final fitting on the flaps and ailerons, that kind of thing. And of course, the belly pan, which is attached. Um, so pretty much immediately after the last video, I did attach the belly pan. It, it was not... I was not looking forward to it because I knew it was going to be a not-so-fun task. I knew it wasn't going to be hard, it just wasn't going to be fun. Of course, to, I'm not... I don't build for the sport of building, so none of this is really fun for me. Um, I do it because I have to. If I wanted to fly as a Rolly Bearcat, well, i got to build one. So I did. Um, but the belly pan went on, and it, it, it was all right. Um, still looks a little bit rough. Nothing is final sanded on the wings yet. Um, but once I got it installed and put on the fuselage, um, I, th I did this, I think, Friday evening. So this piece here was put on after the fact to kind of fill in the gap between the, the pan itself and to where it lines up with the fuselage uh, sides. So that turned out all really well. Um, it took a lot of finagling to get it on there, because like I said, there's there's no reference uh, markings or anything on any of the uh, the formers that are inside. So it's all just a big guess. Um, but it wasn't too bad at all. I basically overcut it so it fit in there oversized, and then I laid then I laid a piece of uh, I think like a quarter inch by three eighths balsa strip along the entire uh, bottom side of the belly pan and then I kind of final I kind of you know sanded that to get it to the the right uh, height and everything and then glued it on with epoxy and micro balloons and then went ahead and put the uh, the lightweight filler on there to make it blend into the wing real nice which it did so that's cool um, I don't think I showed this in the last video because I didn't want to take the plane apart but uh, all the inside area of the landing gear wells, underneath the sheeting, all the way around, I put quarter-inch square blocks um, in there just to make it a little more sturdy. So both front and back, that's all probably hard to see, but that's all done. Um, I did sheet this, because once I put the belly pan on, I had to put the gear in and then start retracting them and making marks to cut out the belly pan. Because as you can see, the uh, the wheel does have to go into the belly pan a little bit to get down into the wells. So once I did that, that left a big open gap in there. So I sheeted that. I probably should have sheeted all the way down to the bottom. I think it probably would have looked better, but eh. No big deal, just a sport plane. Um, I mainly just wanted to fill this area in so air wasn't going to just get inside there, have nowhere to exit, and, you know, blow the sheeting off. That would be just freaking awesome. <clears throat> oh, man. Two, I'm on my second pot of coffee today, so I'm a little jittery. Uh, but that all went really well. Um, the inside areas of the wing that are exposed where the gear sits, this bay right here is the only one I fiberglass the inside just because the rib spacing between these two ribs is wider than the rest of the ribs on the wing. So I, so I, I fiberglass that just to give it a little bit more strength, um, just because it's a little wider right there. Um, see, I got some Gorilla Glue globbers in there from other things that were done. Yeah, that's fine. I could try to peel those out of there, but I think it's just going to yank the sheeting with it. So I'm just going to leave it there and just pretend I never saw it. Good? Good. All right. Um, so yeah, all that went uh, really well. Gear doors are done. Um, I think I showed the doors themselves in the last video. Can't remember. 
uh, but this is what they look like um, basically ready to be painted and or covered what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the outside edge right here and then whatever paint I'm going to use for my cowl I'll just paint the inside but these are all uh, put together I used epoxy and micro balloons as a fillet to uh, make everything nice and strong of course the inside is all fiberglass with two layers or yeah two layers of six tenths ounce cloth and the outside is just the uh, just the plywood finish so those are good and I know I, I talked about it already but I kind of curved them a little bit so they look better in the down position but I'll show you what I was talking about I'm gonna have to reposition here sorry when the gear are in the airplane and the gear is retracted the doors fit relatively flush here but up here they do sink in a little bit now that's kind of just the downside to using a non-scale gear this stuff is not going to fit perfect so i kind of had to split the difference but eh, it's not bad really besides when it's in the air flying mach 1 you're not going to see any of that stuff anyway um, so moving on to the fuselage, uh, you'll notice some things look a little finished. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I just got the cowl put on, uh, Friday. It's not attached and honestly, it doesn't even need to be attached. That thing is so freaking tight on that fuselage. I could probably fly it with it just sitting on there. Not, not literally. I know. Some keyboard warrior is going to come at me with that. No, I will screw it on there. But it is, uh, it's for just only sliding over the fuselage about a quarter inch, it is a very, very tight fit. Very tight. But that's good. Um, kind of finished uh, uh, sh the final shaping of the cockpit area. That is as scale as that cockpit's going to be. Once it's covered, I'm probably just going to paint it black. I'll do the uh, the uh, the crush guard or roll guard, whatever you want to call it, uh, that goes behind the pilot seat. I'll put a pilot bust in there, but that's the extent that that is going to be. I do not do cockpits. I refuse. It's not going to happen. Um, throughout last week, this was my nightmare that I finally eventually just said, you know what? It's good enough. Um, the dorsal fin uh, supplied by uh, the uh, what's supplied in Nick's plans is supposed to be a two-piece affair that kind of wraps around and blends up. And I honestly just didn't feel like doing all that. So I just took a piece of quarter inch, uh, glued it on there, made a fillet piece, and then started piling on some of the really cheap, cheap, you know, uh, hardware store filler to give it the rough shape that I was looking for and then started going over it with the uh, with the nice filler that uh, that you know dries real solid so as you can see it does blend in to the fin you know quite well it's not just a piece of wood that just you know butts up against the fin that's not going to work oh and I glued the tail on if you haven't noticed once the tail section was glued on, I had to fill in this area here. Um, so instead of, you know, 10 hours of trial and error making a piece of sheeting that just magically fit, you can kind of see the the uh, the cracks in the sheeting where they're joined together. But I, I just uh, planked this area. That just made that so much nicer. And of course, uh, using the filler to give me good gaps. The bottom side probably hard to tell um, but the fillet on the bottom is done with epoxy and micro balloon so it's structural um, I I struggled with this thing for days and it's still not perfect I need to quit looking at it because it just bothers me um, it's it, it every time I would put filler on there and start sanding it to blend it it would like make little little ridges and it just is, what a freaking nightmare. I have never had that much problem. 
I mean, my Carolina Kits chipmunk has a very similar situation with the dorsal fin, and it went so well. And this one is just a pain in the ass. It's not going to look good, but you know what? I just, my give a damn is busted on this thing. It is what it is, and we're just going to go with it. I mean, look at a full-scale bear cat. You know, they're not smooth. They're they're bumpy. They're wavy because they're all, you know, it's, it's a, a metal-covered airplane. So yeah, having it be not super smooth and perfect is, uh, in my benefit, in my opinion, more accurate to scale. So once again, my laziness is actually accurate. How about that? <sighs> anyway, um, let me put this on pause real quick, and I'll flip over the fuselage and show you some of the work I've done on the inside. Hang on. Okay, so last night. I wrapped the wing with saran wrap and then goobered up the wing saddle with epoxy and micro balloon. So now it needs to be trimmed and sanded, but as you can see, it has just a nice smooth finish. So that wing is going to sit on there just as pretty as it please. Um, the wing mounts in the front um, are all reinforced with uh, tri stock on the bottom side holding it to the front end, so those are nice and solid. Um, the rear ones have this plywood piece here with a piece of tri-stock on the inside that attaches to the mounts, and then this is also epoxy to the crutch, so this is basically, you know, boxed in. It's not going anywhere. Now the big one. So, the most notorious thing about a Zeroli Bearcat is the fact that there's a good chance the whole front end of the airplane is just going to fly off. So, what I did, I wanted to come up with a way to reinforce the front end, but also put a little weight up there too. This thing is going to take at least, I'd say, three to four pounds of weight in the nose once it's done. Hopefully only about three, but we'll see. So what I did is going from the firewall to the number two former. I made these uh, quarter inch ply uh, plates pretty much that are held to the firewall and to the number two former wood tri stock. And these are all epoxied in. <clears throat> oh man. So what that's doing is it's spreading the load that's going to be put on the front end of the airplane when that's you know when the engine's running. It's spreading that load back to this number two former. So after doing all this, it's not going anywhere. Plus this one right here, I think, is going to make a really nice little base for my ignition to sit. Maybe I don't know. I haven't gotten that far yet. But that turned out. Uh, I think that's going to work out really well. And once again, we can look at the wing saddle. Nice and smooth. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, yeah, we'll get another shot of the stab area. You can kind of see the light glistening on it a little bit. Um, the reason I didn't want to use the filler as the, uh, the stab fillet on the bottom is because I wanted this to be structural as well. There's not much of a saddle in there for the stab to glue to. So by making this fillet right here out of epoxy, that's also making the, uh, the connection point of the stab to the fuselage a lot stronger. So that's going to work out quite well. So I think that kind of brings us up to date on all of the uh, construction and all that good stuff. The plane is built. I mean, there is very, very little left um, to do. The wing and fuselage are just about ready for final sanding. Um, there's still a few things that I kind of gave up on, but uh, I, I kind of want to go back and do better. Um, so we'll, we'll see. There's still a few things. Uh, biggest thing, all of the control surfaces are now covered. And just feast your eyes on these. This is the new cover. Um, I think they call it silver. It's not aluminum. And this is the first time I've used this particular color of the new color, new cover covering. And it is fantastic. 
it corners well, it takes the heat well. It's a good color too. It's almost a chrome, it's not quite chrome, but it doesn't have that blotchy look of uh, like monocoat aluminum. And look at the tips. Now that is something to be proud of. Because typically the, there's a piece of dust on there. Yeah, the whole thing's dusty, whatever. Um, typically your metal type coverings or your metallic coverings do not corner very well. Um, what I found with these is the, the, this covering didn't like to roll over the edge just using the iron. Um, I had to pull and heat, pull and heat. Um, and that method worked really well. As you can see, it just, it just worked and it worked extremely well. I'm very pleased with that. Um, that's going to look really nice. And it's the colors not too far off from Monocoat aluminum because here's Monocoat aluminum that I covered my P47 with, uh, 12 years ago. And this is pretty close, which means the paint that I'm going to use for my cowl should also work really good with this covering as well. So that's a plus. And uh, flaps are all done as well. And they turned out just beautiful. Just beautiful. The seams hide pretty well on this covering, which I was kind of surprised with. I didn't think they would, but they uh, really they really blend well. A lot better than the white, believe it or not. Um, so that so it seams really well. Um, I really was anticipating it not going quite as well. Um, let me flip this fuselage over again. I want to show you a couple things. Hang on. Okay, so. I covered the elevators first, and I did that last night. And once I was done, I realized really how shittily of a job I did building the elevators. They really were not sanded anywhere near as well as I thought. Um, so I ended up cutting the covering off just the top. The bottoms still look, you know, not the greatest, but, you know, yeah, it's the bottom. We've already established that, yes, I am that guy. Um, so I recovered just the top. So now they look just, just beautiful. They work really well. But the plus side to recovering just the tops is I was able to peel the covering off. And that kind of gave me an idea of just how well the adhesion is on this covering. So I kept the piece of covering that I peeled off. So as you can see, yep, there's the aluminum covering. But now look at this side here. Everywhere that it was um, attached to the wood structure, it has taken a little bit of the surface of that structure with it. Which means, yep, yeah, yeah, this is all wood. So what that means is the only way for this to come off is it does have to take a little bit of the wood with it. Which means the adhesion is just really, really good. So, kind of glad that it's an unfortunate thing. Um, I kind of was not patient enough, and I should have sanded it better. But I'm kind of glad that happened, because I was able to peel this off and kind of verify just how good the adhesion is. And that's pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. So I held on to that for a reason. Hang on. Okay, so, um, and before I covered the rudder, I just finished the rudder. Um, so the changes that I had to make and do better on the elevators, I did to the rudder before I even attempted to cover it. But that all turned out really well. So now all the control surfaces are done. Um, I still need to do more work. I just... I want that to be so much better, but at the same time, you know, I have to, I have to know when to just quit and call it good enough. I'm just afraid of what's that's what that's going to look like with the uh, with the silver covering. I think it's really going to enhance the uh, not so great qualities of my craftsmanship here. 
So we'll see. Um, and I've, I've kind of struggled with the fuselage getting it really round. The One of the advantages to glassing an airplane like this is, you know, you can get it as round as you can, but then when you glass it um, with your uh, three-quarter ounce cloth, two coats of resin, primer, filler, all that stuff, you can kind of make this into whatever you want. But right now I'm dealing with just wood and trying to make it real round is relatively difficult. But I think it should look all right. But, you know, once again, the, uh, the full scale was not all that round. It was very, very blocky and, you know, not all that terrific. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I still haven't made the doors yet. There's no need. It's a uh, it's three inch by three inch or something like that. So once this is all covered, hinged, and everything, I'm gonna do all this stuff last. There's no need to have to do it now. I just need to cut four identical doors, and they'll pop right in those little slots, and that should work out quite well. One more good shot of the tail section here. That that just turned out really nice. And I'm getting to the point where I have to start trying to figure out how I'm going to cover the fuselage. Um, you may have to go back a few videos, but the uh, the back end of the airplane is white, and I kind of from here back. So it goes from here to the stab, and then you know kind of down this way. And everything on the back is white, and it's got these dark blue uh, stripes that go down the rudder. So I have to plan out how I'm going to cover all my jams. Um, I have to figure all that stuff out. So covering the fuselage shouldn't be too bad, even though it is a very round fuselage, but it's a very straight fuselage that's round. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'm probably going to have to do most of the work with a heat gun, which, you know, not a big deal. Because I remember when I built my last Corsair, I really, really struggled with the fuselage. It took, I don't know, three failed attempts before I finally got it. So hopefully all those uh, uh, bad memories will come back when I start covering this one. But so you can see the just you know the dorsal fin does look good. It's just not all that good. I just don't know how much more time I want to put into it. Because every time I, uh, you know, lay up all the filler and sand it, I make one spot better, then I make another spot worse, and eventually I'm just going to end up destroying the damn thing. So I should just leave it alone and just call it good enough. Um, covering this area, I'm sure, is going to be a real treat because that is quite an interesting shape. So that's probably going to be real fun. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's uh, the new cover covering is really good stuff. Just the only downside to it is I don't know how it's going to be 20 years from now. And I get longevity out of airplanes. So we will find out. Hopefully it's going to be in there for the long run. I mean, look how reflective that is. That is real good stuff um, let's see what else is there the oh yeah the front wing mounts here let me turn this wing over I'm gonna set you down for a second hang on boy it's a good thing I wasn't recording because when I flipped the wing over I almost dropped it that would have just you probably would have never seen a video from me again anyways um, so the, the these mounts right here just epoxy right to this plywood sub leading edge back here and of course when I did it I didn't have everything right so there was kind of a gap on the top side which I completely filled with epoxy so it is real strong but I went one step further and on each one I put two quarter inch dowels that I ran all the way through and filled with Gorilla Glue so it uh, even if for some miraculous reason uh, they come loose. They can't actually pull away because they're pinned. And of course, on the top side of them here, they're uh, they're attached with the triangle stock as well. 
and yeah that this doesn't look all that all that pretty uh, this is just a shim basically to make the gap between the belly pan and the front of the fuselage even all the way around so yeah that does all this looks just awful but none of it is visible and kind of the same situation where this piece here uh, meets the bottom of the fuselage um, just a little scab piece in there so this piece doesn't flop all over the place but yeah it's not pretty to look at from the inside but you're never gonna see any of this all you're gonna see is the fuselage coming down to here and then it takes over in the belly pan so all that is good to go my slipper fell off um, I've already put in a plate for this is gonna be where my uh, retract servo and valve are gonna sit so the tank is gonna be in the fuselage somewhere but this way all the air lines are going to come out of these tubes along with the uh, aileron servo wires. They're going to go straight to the valve, no disconnects. The only disconnect is going to be where it goes up to my tank. So I'll only have one, one disconnect that could possibly uh, leak. And once again, the, uh, the intakes here are just, just, oh, they turned out really well. I could probably sand them even better, but once again, I just have to kind of know when to give up and, you know, when is good enough, good enough, right? Just the only thing I'm concerned about is this new cover is a very lightweight film, so it's very thin. And I'm just worried that a lot of these areas might be somewhat visible once it's covered, but at the same time, it is what it is. If it turns out to look blotchier than I would like, what I could always do, and it's the reason I did it on my P47, is because the, the P47, my covering job, did not turn out too well. I finished this airplane in a big hurry so I could get it ready to fly, and the covering was not the prettiest. So I, I put on panel line detail. So now you really don't see the covering finish, you notice more of the panel lines. And all this was done, you know, 12 years ago, and this plane has been eh, crashed somewhat on four different occasions, and it's still going, still looks good, covering is good, so there's always that option there. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now. I think everybody is pretty much caught up. Um, I don't think I have to do any more final fitting. I just need to touch up a few areas uh, by sanding, and I should be able to start covering the wing and fuselage. I only ordered one roll of the covering because I wasn't sure about the color, um, but I really like the color. That's a nice, nice color. So, I'm going to get some more work done on it. I think I'm going to take a break for a little bit because I'm exhausted, and I'm going to grab something to eat. So... Until the next time, later.